Hey guys, how's it going? This is Tutor from Legion X Studios, and I got a cool tutorial for you guys today. I'm going to be showing you how to create some really cool tones inside of Photoshop. This is what I'll be creating today. Uh, the inspiration came from a lot of popular Instagrammers, and more specifically, the type of photos that tend to get featured in these, you know, community accounts such as uh, Way Too Ill. I've got up here. You can kind of see very similar toning in their photos from the photographers they like to feature. Or the other example is uh, a Game of Tones, very similar style in in toning and and color. Uh, this is kind of a, a big trend that's been going on for a while. So instead of uh, you know purchasing these premium Lightroom presets that a lot of photographers are selling themselves, I figured you know I'm a photographer, I might as well take a crack at it myself and see what I can come up with. Uh, and I did exactly that. I'm pretty happy with the outcome, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, create these types of tones yourself today. So. I always get started in side of camera raw. I, I shoot all my photos in JPEG and raw, but I always edit the the raw file just because it's um, you know you don't degrade the the quality of the image when you do a lot of edits to it. So let me just uh, take away all the the values I had already had set in there and kind of walk you through it exactly what I did. So the, the first thing that I like doing inside of Camera Raw and one of the big reasons I like using it is to be able to bring out more detail in the photo. You can do that in Photoshop as well, but I feel like their their tools and filters don't do as good of a job as, as, as the clarity tool inside of Camera Raw. For this photo, I bumped the, the clarity up to about 75. I try not to overdo it because then you kind of start seeing this, this ghosting effect around the fingers and in some of the areas, but I felt this was a good value for this image to to bring out a lot of detail and not making it look too clowny. Uh, another thing about raw files, they generally tend to be very flat and by flat I mean they don't have uh, a lot of color especially after well before the clarity so I start my my you know adding a little bit of color a lot of which I'll be taking away later in Photoshop but I like adding it here so I use the vibrance instead of saturation I feel it, it gives it a, a much truer representation of, of what the colors should be and in this case I use the value of around 35 you can see it brought brought out some of the blues and some of the greens in the color uh, in the image lastly well, the second last thing that I did in this image is uh, I just bumped up the contrast. Again, this would be something that I'll be taking away of uh, later in the image, but um, same as same as the color, I like adding it in here, and then whatever I need to subtract later, I'll take out in Photoshop. There's one last thing that I did do in this image additionally, um, which I can't really show you guys how I did, but it's pretty straightforward, is I painted in a little bit more clarity into the areas of the clouds. So before, you know, the clouds look like this right now, but previously they were um, a little dull. So by using the brush uh, tool, what I did is I painted in a little bit more cloud and at a clarity of 100, and um, that made it that gave it this really this really nice look because previously it was it was kind of um, kind of dull. Um, so after we finished all these edits, uh, we can go ahead and open up the image inside of Photoshop. What we'll have to do is we'll need to flip this photo around just because I like the perspective of, of you know having the image inside of the ball. Um, the one that's right side up instead of the background. So very simple, control T, or you can go inside of image, you know, either free transform, or you can uh, use this and, you know, flip it horizontally. I think it would be, no, it would be vertically. Yeah. Anyways, so the first layer, uh, we'll start with a curves adjustment. And uh, with the curves adjustment, we'll be adding uh, more contrast and we'll be doing a lot of the coloring with this. So um, generally first thing is, you know, just a little, little S curve that, you know, a lot of people generally will always do with all their photos just to add more contrast. Then we'll go into our each individual channels. And what I like doing is, is this is kind of where the toning goes on. So what I do for all the channels or depending on what what kind of a theme color I want is by crushing the highlights and the shadows of certain colors and leaving the midtones in the middle. So what I mean by that is, you know, for the red channel, I will I'll make a point in the middle and then I will crush uh, the highlights and the shadows. And this makes it so that, you know, basically all the highlights and the shadows have no reds, but the midtones will have the reds. So like the hand will kind of still have that skin color instead of, you know, if I went like this, you know, we would lose a lot of the skin color. So it just makes it seem more natural. Then I'll go into the green channel, same thing 
take away from the highlights, take away from the midtones or the the shadows, but keep the midtones. And for blue, I'll raise because I want a blue tone to the image. I'll raise both the highlights and the shadows, but keep the midtones right in the middle. So this would be my colors of adjustments, and you can kind of see the the overall tone of the image is is blue. So we've we've actually added a lot of dramatic effect to to this image. I, you know, instantly this, this looks way better. The next thing that I added was a photo filter. You can find this uh, right here, photo filter. And the reason I added one of these photo filters is because instead of uh, messing around with the curves, I always like working with extra layers of adjustments just because you can add to it or you can subtract. So by using the opacity tool, I can add more warmth or take away more warmth without, you know, overcomplicating the curves. So with this photo layer of, I use a warming filter 85, I brought this down to about an opacity of 60%. So now we've added a little bit of warmth back to the image but it's not too much warmth that, you know, we're kind of back to the, the original adjustment layer that I used was a channel mixer. Channel mixer is, is a very interesting plugin where it kind of makes your images look very, very dramatic, or at least this is the way that I use it. I'm not sure if this is the intended way of the, of the filter, but you can basically isolate one of, um, one of your colors and then just basically like turn it 180. So with the channel mixer, uh, by applying this, it's a black and white filter with a green filter. So that means that it'll uh, take a look at your green values, bring them out, whereas everything else will, will stay more grayscale. Um, so I brought this down to about uh, 46%. So you can kind of see what happened here. Uh, we took away a lot of the, the blue, but we, we were able to, to keep the green, but it still has that like blue, blue tinge to it. Now, the next adjustment layer that I used was a levels adjustment. And I uh, took this to about 32. And this was just to, to take away from the, the added contrast that I've, I've kind of like boosted through the image and also take away some of the color and achieve the look that, you know, some of these photos have. So, uh, you know, we, we kind of have this like whited out kind of filter on, on top of the image. So there we have it. This pretty much completes the, the image. It looks pretty similar to, to the one that I had before. Obviously you can play around a little bit more with the sliders just to get the, you know, the, the right type of colors that you're looking for. You can, you know, invert it. You can make it more of a, a green tone instead. So, you know, if we went into our uh, values here, we could crush the blues and bump up the greens instead. So, I mean, you know, this is personally not my favorite type of look, but definitely something that, that people might be into. Yeah, so that's that about ends it all for me. Stay tuned till the next episode. Um, I have something pretty cool planned. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.